Hey guys, welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. Today we are going over my top five recommended plugins for making travel videos. Most of these plugins are good for all types of video creations. However, I mostly make travel videos, so that's why I'm coming at the tutorial from that stance. Firstly, I wanna say that this video is not sponsored by any of the companies that create these plugins. I mention these specific plugins because they are simply the ones that I use. However, this video is sponsored by a different company and that company is called Yellow Images. Yellow Images is a marketplace for packaging, apparel, and other ready-to-go mock-ups. With an exclusive collection of more than 39,000 product mock-ups, you can find the perfect fit for almost any project. Yellow Images provides that final seal of professionalism when presenting and pitching to clients or presenting the project update proposal to your team. The mock-up files are super easy to use as JPEGs or customizable smart objects in Photoshop. Yellow Images also does unique rendered fonts and 3D PNG images for your videos, slideshows, and presentations. Use the coupon code MarkHarrison for 30% off at checkout. Link is in the description. All right, that brings us to plugin number one, and that plugin is Motion Tracker by Pixel Film Studios. So this Motion Tracker tracks text or something like an image or a PNG, and it just follows wherever you track it without having to set keyframes. So it automatically keyframes everything for you. Now, I really like using this plugin for tracking a title when let's say we're introducing a city name or a destination name or a country name or something like that. I really like to use it for an introductory sequence. Let me give you an example. All right, so here's a clip I shot in Cappadocia, Turkey as the drone flies by Jordan who's standing on the cliff. Now I want that text to appear right beside him. So I'm gonna go into my titles layer, grab a custom text, drop it right beside. Now we can just leave the text there for now. It doesn't, it's not important, we can delete it later. But I'll just type Turkey with my favorite font. And now I'm going to back to the title layer and finding the motion tracker right there. Cut it down to the size we need. And now I'm going to open the track editor. So by clicking that T and the track editor, So using this red little box, I'm going to select an area on the screen that has a high level of contrast. So as you can see, Jordan is silhouetted in the sky. That should work well. So put our track quality always to 100. And in this case, I want position and scale to be tracked. I'm not really concerned about the rotation, just the position and the scale. Sometimes I find the track assist filter will help boost the contrast, but sometimes it doesn't help. So it's just kind of touch and go with that option. All right, when we're ready, let's just press play and allow it to start auto tracking. So right now we can see the tracker is holding very well, but then, oh, it loses it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the frame that it lost the track. So we're gonna back up here in our timeline and there we go, we can see the frame where it lost it right there. So we can make our canvas size bigger like that, our timeline bigger with this one what we're gonna do is just select the keyframes that are no good by holding shift and dragging over top and then right click and remove keyframes. Now we want to manually keyframe the rest. So in the offset position X, Y, scale X, Y, we select those and then we just go frame by frame, we manually keyframe them over. So we go right arrow, slide it over, and this way we can also skip a bunch of frames and then just slide it all the way over like that and that will still hold. So we want to get it right off the screen so we're gonna make our canvas size smaller and drag the tracker right off the screen. All right, let's export that data and we'll see what that looks like. All right, once the export has completed, we want to select on-screen control mode and that will show us what we want to drop in the drop zone. So select the drop zone, then this is where we click our text that we did earlier and you'll see it's now on our image. So we'll drag it to the area we want and now we can apply the scale data using X scale and press play and you can see it looks pretty good. All right, let's do another simpler example with a car driving in the desert. Should be super easy to track, so let's find the clip that we want to attach some lettering to. Drag it into the timeline as you can see here, I already have my text selected. I'm gonna drag the tracker over top of the clip. 
and we're going to go through the same steps as before. So go to the beginning of the drop zone. We are going to select the track editor. Once we get into this area, we're going to adjust the size of the red box, put it over the item we want tracked, put the track quality to 100, and in this case, position and scale as well because the car is going to be driving away from us. We're just going to press play and look at that, it's having no problem tracking the car as it's moving slowly and away from us. All right, that's good. We're going to export the data and we want to show the on screen control mode. And as you can see, the drop zone's there. So we'll select the drop zone, select the text we want in there, and then we'll put it beside the car. All right, let's press play and see what that looks like. Perfect track. But we also want to apply the scale data so that the words will be getting smaller as the car drives away. So we can click scale there, make the words bigger to start. And now let's take a look and see what that looks like. All right, the track looks good. When we get back to our editor, we can delete the title and body room. We no longer need it. Plugin number two, and that is Maps. So Maps is a good way of kind of connecting your storyline when you travel from one place to another by either plane, bus, car, whatever it is, and you need something to fill in that transition period from moving from one place to another. Now, I personally don't own this plugin because I like to just make it myself. However, I do still recommend this plugin if you are making more professional client style travel videos that will appear on a website or, or on a company's social media or something like that. All right, so I'll just show you the way I make it and then you can decide whether or not you wanna purchase the plugin afterwards. All right, so I typed in two city names, Sydney to Auckland into Google Maps and then I'm just going to take a screenshot of this map. Once I have a screenshot, I'm going to bring it into Final Cut Pro Editor, drop it in the timeline, center the map. All right, now we're gonna find an airplane PNG. We've done this in previous tutorials, but I'll just quickly go over it again. So we're gonna adjust the size, direction of the airplane PNG, then hit the keyframe button in the top left, hit spacebar until we like that duration for midpoint of our flight. Drag the airplane PNG there, adjust the rotation, size, and then we're going to do the same thing. Hit spacebar until we want the end of the clip. Command, shift command B deletes both clips. And then we're just going to continue out our keyframe all the way to the end to the final destination. Adjust the size, rotation, etc. Right click the middle point, make sure it's smooth so the flight path is nice and smooth. Okay, let's take a look at this result. All right, that looks good. All right, our next step is going to be we're going to highlight both the clips, the PNG and the video clip screenshot, make a new compound clip that flattens them together. And now we're going to use the transform tool, zoom out a little bit, and we're going to just crop in our image or zoom in our image and do the same thing again with the keyframing tool. So we're going to hit the keyframe and go to the last frame of our clip and keep the airplane in this, basically in the center of the shot. And if you look, that's kind of what that plugin is all about. That's a very basic way of doing it, but it is a way of doing it nonetheless. So that's the way I'm doing it for now. Here's a full screen look at it. I think it looks good enough, but maybe one day I will upgrade to this plugin when I want it to be faster, more efficient, more clean. We'll see there's an option for you to decide. Plug in number three. And again, no surprise, by Pixel Film Studios. And it is stabilization. Now stabilization is pretty much the most important thing for me. I have a Lumix GH5 for one reason, one reason only, because it is the best camera on the market right now for stabilization. The style of video creation I do is all run and gun and it's quickly whip out, whip out the camera and film whatever's going on. I rarely use a gimbal. 95% of my shots are all handheld. For example, this shot here, I was in the jungle and some members of the Kogi tribe walked out in front of us and I quickly wanted to get some follow footage of them walking through the jungle. Now, it's not like I had an opportunity to just be like, hey, hold on one second while I set up my gimbal and calibrate it and three, two, one action. No, I just have to get my camera out and get the best footage I can while following them. So here is the footage with the Final Cut stabilization. Not bad. 
But here's the footage of me locking into a point using the stabilizer. So you can see the value that this plugin has where you can lock into a single point and get that footage really, really steady. All right, so with the stabilizer plugin over top of our clip, we're gonna open up the track editor and it looks exactly the same as the motion tracker. So we just put the red square over top of the area we want to be tracked, then that will be the center of our clip. So track quality out to 100, and in this case, position only is fine. Then we're going to hit the play button and it is going to track our clip. So I'm just gonna speed that up so that we don't have to wait. Okay, so once the clip is successfully tracked, we can toggle the effect on with that button there. And now you can see this weird effect going on. And those are the guidelines, which we can select those on or off by clicking that box called guide. And that'll show us the area that's getting cut off in that grayed out area. And what it does, it just puts a mirror effect to fill it in. And that's the default setting. But typically what we want to do is we just want to make the scale of the video bigger. So we can scale in and center in, and that will just naturally cut off that area from with the frame. So this effect best works when we stabilize footage as 4K footage because we're going to lose quality the more we scale into the clip. All right, so I think tracking the handbag wasn't the best move. Let's track the hair instead, and that might actually show a steadier clip. All right, so we'll speed that up again and export. And here, after we select the effect to center the clip, and we scale in and we set our points so that we cut off all of that grayed out area. All right, so I think that stabilized footage looks much better than setting the track point to the handbag. All right, let's do another example with a hyperlapse. So we're gonna drag the plugin over top of the clip. We're going to just track the door with the track editor. And as you can see there, it's holding really well. And Final Cut has never been good at steadying hyperlapses typically, but with this plugin, it will really lock on the hyperlapse. All right, plugin number four, and that is Neat Video. Now, no matter what camera we have, unless it's like a red weapon or something really, really good, we always are pushing our low light capability until there's grain or noise in the shot. So I use Neat Video all the time to save my footage that is full of noise and can bring it back and make it usable. For example, here is this shot that we got at night. I was snowboarding down the streets in Montreal and you can see the grain on this is horrible. I don't know what the ISO was, but it's set at automatic. So it probably was like 3200 or maybe 6400, I don't know. So let me just show you quickly on how to use Neat Video. Okay, let's bring our clip into the timeline. And let's take another look by zooming in just how much noise there is. A lot. Okay, so let's find Neat Video under the Effects tab, drag it, drop it on top of the clip, and then select that button called Select to Open. And that will bring up a separate editor. And in here, you just want to draw a box around a consistent area of noise, then hit Auto Profile, and then you can just apply it. So Neat Video takes a lot of processing power, so make sure it's one of the last things you do to your project or your edit to allow it to run through. All right, here is the side-by-side. -side. On the right, you see lots and lots of noise. And on the left, there's a lot of improvement. Okay, a last plugin, and that is MTuber 2 by Motion VFX. And this plugin is strictly for people who upload to YouTube. So if you don't do that, then it's not for you. However, if you do, they are nice, clean titles, icons, um, end screens, little animations, encouraging your audience to subscribe and notify. There's also little logo screens. So just basically little items that you might want to enhance your YouTube channel and enhance the viewer experience. All right, thanks for watching. That is it for my top five recommended plugins for making travel videos. There will be a bunch more tutorials coming to the channel, especially during this lockdown period where I'm not traveling and I'm just sitting here working at my laptop. Some other videos that will be coming are all about masking, another about various ways to make titles, creative titles. Another one is all about transitions. So just let me know in the comments which one you wanna see first, or if you want to learn something else about Final Cut, then also just comment that down below. And if it's a popular idea, then for sure I will make it. All right, that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, notifications, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.